to the launch of the Bradshaw Research Initiative for Minerals and Mining. Um, first, a quick safety announcement. In the event of an emergency, um, we have emergency exits just over here and around the corner and also back the way you came in and we'll meet out the front if anything happens, out the front of the hotel. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge that we're standing on the traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. So the reason for this gathering tonight is to launch an exciting new initiative. The Bradshaw Research Initiative for Minerals and Mining, affectionately known as BRIM, as you can see on the materials around you, um, will connect university and industry research across a wide range of disciplines from um, geology, metallurgy and mining engineering and beyond. BRIM will create solution-driven teams to address the toughest challenges facing the mining industry today. I'd now like to introduce Professor Greg Dipple, the new Director of BRIM appointed in July this year. Greg recently celebrated 25 years at the University of British Columbia. Um, he studies the processes that drive mineral reactions at depth and also at the surface. He was the head of the Department of Earth, Ocean and Atmospheric Sciences um, between 2009 and 2014. Um, and he's been a researcher with the Mineral Deposit Research Unit, MDIU, since the early 1990s. Over to you, Greg. Thank you, Kylie. So on behalf of our hosts, the Dean of uh, of the Faculty of Applied Science, James Olson, and the Dean of the Faculty of Science, uh, Simon Peacock. I'd like to welcome you all to this special event. Uh, tonight, we also have the honor of being joined by Gail Murphy, the Vice President of Research and Innovation at the University of British Columbia. We also have uh, founding members of the Mineral Deposit Research Unit, Peter Bradshaw, John McDonald, Alistair Sinclair. We have the MDRU Director, Craig Hart, and the head of the Norman B. Keeble Institute of Mining Engineering, Scott Dunbar, who is floating around somewhere. He's waving from the back of the room. So um, we rely on the products of mining every day in our homes, cities, for communications and in vehicles. And as an industry, we're governed by rules that regulate their extraction. The products we mine are changing, particularly as we transition to a low carbon, teen, clean tech economy. But the overall process of finding, extracting and processing minerals from the ground remains the same. In an increasingly energy aware society, we still need mining and we're united in our efforts to do it smarter, safer, cleaner, and more efficiently. And that's really the goal of BRIM. BRIM is designed to accelerate innovation and extract more value from mineral systems data collected over the life of a mine. Data integration across traditional silos of exploration, mining, environmental impact will lead to greater appreciation of ore diversity for processing and waste management while maximizing the value of information collected at each stage of the mining cycle. As new technologies and knowledge are applied to mineral discovery, processing, and waste management, they'll benefit from considering the insights and applications across the full mining cycle. The proximity of a world-class industry community and a top 40 research uni university has generated many strong research collaborations between industry and academia. These have largely grown as one-on-one -on -one research collaborations or in disciplinary clusters. An appreciation for the breadth and depth of expertise in mining and minerals at UBC is generally lacking both on campus and downtown. The Norman B. Keeble Institute of Mining Engineering, the Hydrometallurgy Group, the Mineral Deposit Research Unit, the Geological Engineering Group, Geophysical Inversion Facility are each recognized as global leaders in their disciplines, as are many individual researchers. But historically, they have worked in isolation of one another and their reputational benefit in industry is disconnected. Recognize the benefit of integrating the minerals industry research across all relevant disciplines at UBC, both for advancing new interdisciplinary programs and for building stronger research partnerships with industry. BRIM is focused on six goals that are highlighted on the slides that you'll see cycling through the TV screens this evening. These goals are to expand the capacity and visibility of UBC mining related research on campus and downtown to foster interdisciplinary collaboration and engage new UBC research expertise, to engage with the minerals industry to identify new and relevant areas of multidisciplinary research, to motivate and provide seed funding to new integrated and multidiscipline research programs across the full mining life cycle, 
and to promote advanced training across mineral systems mining life cycle. We also fully intend to increase the mining related research capacity at UBC by engaging with new faculty members and ultimately influencing hiring at the University of British Columbia. On campus, we're in the midst of an ongoing process of identifying the community of researchers at UBC with connection and relevance to the minerals industry. Already, several research areas stand out as having world-class expertise and the breadth to impact the mining cycle, and I'm sure there's many more to come. As the slides cycle through, you'll see examples of some of these groups, including the mining microbiome, geometallurgy and tailings, and a theme on water. We, uh, you'll see examples of the benefits of integrating these investigations across the full life mining cycle, as well as trying to highlight the UBC faculty that are active in these areas. In particular, making sure that as we look at the individuals, we're drawing on researchers from the Faculty of Applied Science, Faculty of Science, from Forestry, Land and Food Systems, and other places, other areas on campus. One example drawn from my own research uses exploration geochemical data to assess ore and gang heterogeneity. This has implications for identifying representative samples for metallurgical testing and for assessing environmental reactivity of tailings as a function of alteration style and ore type. We've identified very significant impacts in mitigating greenhouse gas emissions associated with mining and opened up some new possibilities for using tailings to build bio mine infrastructure through reaction with carbon dioxide, just as one example. Likewise, research in genomics at UBC is crossing boundaries and generating insights across the full life mining cycle. And these examples will cycle through on the slides as, uh, as you watch them this evening. And we know that there's many more examples like this to come. It's still very early days, but we're gathering a team. Let me introduce Professor Merrick Pollack. He's the Associate Director for BRIM. Where's Merrick? Merrick Pollack, Associate Director. So BRIM is a joint initiative between the Faculty of Science, which I'm part of, and the Faculty of Applied Science. Where Merrick is a professor in the Normal B. Keeble Institute of Mining Engineering. Merrick's research interests include the chemistry and processing of minerals and coal. He's also applied his expertise to environmental problems and tailings. Now the B in BRIM stands for Bradshaw. BRIM has been made possible through the leadership and a generous financial gift from Dr. Peter Bradshaw. He's a man who needs little introduction, but I'll give you some highlights. He's an experienced geologist, geochemist, explorer, and researcher with several discoveries under his belt. He was inducted into the Canadian Mining Hall of Fame in 2015 in recognition of his achievements in the mining industry, including significant discovery in Papua New Guinea and his work on social issues around mining. He's a co-founder and first chair of the Mineral Deposit Research Unit 27 years ago, and he's been a long-term supporter both of mining and minerals research at UBC. First of all, I want to thank you for your gift, Peter. I hope you'll join me in thanking Peter. And also, I'd like to invite you up to the stage to say a few words. Holy mackerel, what a crack. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing what a free drink will bring up. <laughs> you know, it's come to... To, to, to fruition. I mean, I mean, this is this has been a dream I've had for 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 quite a while, and I've got to say, you know, that that that, that Greg Deppel has been hugely supportive and you know helped helped me a great deal in, in in moving this forward. So thank you for that very kind uh, in, invitation. But first, uh, you know, a brief personal note and a bit of background as to why I find this Prim initiative most appealing, and, and put my support behind it. I was most fortunate to work through the 1970s for Barringer Research, whose core business was airborne methods for mineral and hydrocarbon exploration. Airborne geophysics was early and enormously successful, so adding airborne geochemistry to the same plane seemed very logical. Um, however, that turned out to be a, a little more of a challenge. To, to aid in this development in the mid-1970s, we had the first two commercial ICPs. We had the first use of laser ablation on, on, on geological material. We had some very interesting aircraft in installation, including two 16-pane chart recorders. There was no digital at that time. And an ex-test pilot for, for continuous low-level flying. And he did very well. As I can stand here and tell you. 
We, we developed a laser flare sensor that can identify hydrocarbon seeps coming from underwater. We drive vacuum cleaners under choppers to collect geochemical samples, and the list by no means stops there. However, finding expert, funding exploration technology was a bit of a challenge. So we had to cross other boundaries and develop some of these instruments for other purposes. We had instruments for, for measuring pollution and volcanic activity. One of those is still buried in Mount St. Helens. We had instruments in balloons and also in the shuttle and one in the, in the Mir space station. One interesting co contract was with the U.S. Army for sniffing out Viet Cong. And every time you're swapped for drugs or explosives at an airport anywhere in the world, this is a Barringer instrument. The list goes, goes on, and I've had a great pleasure together with, with others in putting together a, a book about these, these methods and the exploits that was recently published. After Barringer, I joined Placer, later Placer Dome, and was most fortunate as they had a uh, in-house project development group that was an effective bridge between exploration and, 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 and production. They frequently had to have one of their engineers in, in the field on our exploration programs. We, we were welcome to, to sit in on, 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 on their meetings and we were welcome to visit operating mines. Crossing that exploration production boundary was made easy and enjoyable working with Placer. Blaster was also a world leader in working with indigenous people, which helped me enormously. Most re more recently, my partner around Britain and I formed First Point Minerals, which holds the first nickel deposit in the world, where nickel is in the form of a nickel iron alloy. Not a sulfide, not an oxide, as all other nickel mines are. It's very large and will have a very low environmental impact. This is in BC. And I'm very confident when the price of nickel recovers, we'll, we'll be a mine. T turning to, to Brim, you, you've heard all, already from, from Greg Dipple, so I'll make that short, short. The prime purpose of Brim from sort of the very high, high level is threefold. First of all, to, to generate research into any and all aspects of the mineral exploration, from discovery to closure, including the environment and the social issues, and importantly, research that breaks down barriers. Secondly, to generate joint industry UBC brain projects to, to make better use of the incredible brain power and the facilities at UBC, working together with the Canadian mining industry, including the service providers, which, which is very important, to help make mining smarter, more efficient, cleaner, more socially acceptable, and to compete better on the world stage. And thirdly, and very importantly, train the next generation of students in the new skills that will be required. As Greg outlined, and I will reinforce, the BRIM director will be from either the Faculty of Science or Applied Science and the Associate Director from the other faculty. This will ensure that research can indeed cross both boundaries. BRIM will also provide an easy entry point for, for industry to UBC to determine the full range of integrated capabilities that are available to address their problems. Greg referred to, to, to the number of world-class class, uh, groups, possibly silos, that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are there, but by crossing the boundaries between them, you know, I can only imagine what, what, what is capable. Research conducted under the BRIM banner could also very well use expertise from other universities anywhere in the world, and also second people from, from industry, both companies and service providers, to work on particular pro projects. UBC, however, will always be the hub. The president here today of, of, of the Dean of Applied Science, James Olson, and the Dean of Science, Simon Pickdeka, demonstrates UBC's commitment to support research that crosses boundaries in the whole broad field of, of mineral extraction, extraction. Furthermore, the presence of Gail Murphy, the Vice President of Research and Innovation, who you will hear from shortly, and who has UBC-wide responsibility for these areas, reinforces that commitment. I thank you all for being here. Looking back, I've always enjoyed crossing boundaries 
and I've been hoping to be with the companies I worked with. I look forward to the next number of years and the frontiers that bring projects will push back. Improve the mineral extraction industry, and expand BC's and UBC's position as a recognized world leader centering on mineral extraction. I'm delighted I'm in the position to help that initiative. Thank you. A standing ovation for any of my talks, and at least those at the back of your room obliged. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Now I'd like to introduce Professor Gail Murphy, the Vice President for Research and Innovation at the University of British Columbia. Um, she's responsible for directing and supporting the research and innovation activities at UBC and oversees relationships and collaborations like BRIM. Welcome, Gail. You know, this is an absolutely amazing turnout, and we know it's all due to Peter and the networks he's created and the amazing thing that he's doing here tonight. So I'm really delighted to join everybody for the launch of this really exciting new initiative. On behalf of UBC President Santa Ono and the researchers and students from both science and applied science, we're going to benefit from Peter's foresight for years to come. I really would like to thank Peter for his outstanding generosity to UBC. We are confident that this special initiative will produce wonderful results that may help transform the industry for years to come. BRIM is a great example of how collaborative and multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary teams can tackle the major problems that we face today. By drawing on some of the key research strengths at UBC, from mineral, mineral exploration, geometallurgy, and engineering to water management, energy efficiency, genomics, and big data. It also builds on a history of creating a supportive environment for academia and industry to work together to solve problems. Through these partnerships addressing key industry challenges, our researchers can contribute to innovations in processes, techniques, and approaches that have both social and economic impacts. UBC is a top 40 Global Research Institute, and it's recognized for its commercialization and innovation activities. We engage in more than 1,300 research collaborations with industry each year, and UBC and the mining sector have long been partners. Indeed, mining and mineralogy have been present since the very founding of UBC more than 100 years ago. At UBC, we're increasing our focus on innovation to enable our researchers to help generate meaningful socioeconomic impacts which range from new products and services to improved health outcomes, contributions to public debate, culture, and policy. BRIM's multidisciplinary approach and integration with industry is an exciting example of how university research can contribute to innovation, but it can impact local, national, and global communities. And it's really a hallmark of what UBC stands for and a part of our emerging strategic plan. I look forward to ultimately hearing about the impacts of BRIM through new ways of providing vital materials for social society safely, efficiently, and with reduced environmental impact. It's now my pleasure to introduce Sally Goodman, Vice Chair of the Board of the Mineral Deposit Research Unit and Director of Generative Geology at Goldcorp, which is a lot of cheese right in a row. <laughs> in exploration and mining is essential to us. And strangely enough, last week at Goldport, we held an off-site technical summit where we got our brightest geologists, metallurgists, and mining engineers from the sites together um, with all the, the greybeards from the corporate office. And we brainstormed some of our challenges. And it was really great to see the cross-functional teams come up with, with the issues that are key to making our industry better. Uh, however, it's difficult to come up with solutions when you have to, um, when you're busy with a day job of running a mine safely and profitably. As a sector, we're evolving and changing to use less water, less energy, 
and to emit less carbon dioxide while still extracting maximum value from our operations, doing more for less. And it simply makes good business sense to be less wasteful and to maximise our resources. And we're doing this in the face of ever tightening regulation. Uh, sometimes that's by legislation in the jurisdictions in which we operate. But it's also by setting efficiency and sustainability goals for ourselves. For example, at Gold Corp, we have a program that we call Towards Zero Water. The aim of which is to develop a mine with no net water consumption at some future date. And I know other companies have similar initiatives. But setting lofty goals is all very well, but reaching them is another matter. And as an industry, we have some serious challenges, and we have a lot of data. But we need help to turn that data into viable, practical solutions. Innovation doesn't happen in a vacuum, and to make mining more efficient and reduce energy emissions and water use, we need to work with world-leading researchers such as those that you have at UBC. We know that innovation typically comes when someone realises that work being done in one field has the potential to revolutionise another. But that will only happen in a collaborative environment. BRIM is building on the successful model of MGRU, the 27-year-old Mineral Deposit Research Unit, which I'm currently um, Vice Chair of the Board. For more than a quarter of a century, MGRU has brought together industry partners, students and researchers, to solve specific problems, mainly up to this point in the mineral exploration space, um, and supported by industry involvement. And MGRU has also played a major role in training the next generation of talent that we need to build and grow a sustainable mining industry worldwide. BRIM will take the MDRU successful, tried and tested method and apply it across the whole mining cycle, from early discovery, through mining, processing, and on into rehabilitation. So, on behalf of the mining industry, I look forward to working with you to develop the mines of the future. And how this works, whether we hand over all our data and just let you have at it, or whether we embed some of our brightest into your research groups, or take some of your researchers and embed them into our minds, that's still up for discussion. But however it works, I'm sure I speak on behalf of all industry representatives that are here when I say I'm really very excited about the potential of this collaborative venture to produce really meaningful results. And I can't thank Peter enough for having the commitment and the vision to establish the Bradshaw Research Initiative for Minerals and Mining. Thank you. Well, that's it for this evening. Um, thank you, Sally, Peter, Greg, and Gail for your um, comments this evening. Um, please stay and network and eat and drink responsibly. Um, and <laughs> we don't have time for questions, um, but if you would like to ask questions of any of our speakers or any of our VIPs, um, I'm sure they would be happy to chat with you um, this evening. So we'll see you all at Roundup, we'll see you all at PDAC, and have a great and festive season.